ዜና ስትልኝ ተመልካቾቻችን ይህ በለባዊ አካዳሚና በአርት ቴሌቪዥን ትብብር እየተዘጋጀ የሚቀርብላችሁ ዕውቀት ከለባዊያን የተሰኘው ፕሮግራም ነው ሰላም በለባዊ ትምህርት ቤት ርእሰ ጉዳይ ተኮር ወይም ቴማቲክ የመማርና የማስተማር ስልት እንጠቀማለን ርእሰ ጉዳይ ተኮር የመማርና ማስተማር ስልት ማለት የተለያዩ የትምህርት ዘርፎችን በአንድ ውህድ ማስተጋበር በአንድ ውህድ ማስቀመጥና ማስተማር ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ሁለቱ የስነ ጽሁፍ ዋና ሐሳቤዎች ሶስቱ የስነ ልቦና መሰረታዊ ሐሳቦች ወይም አምስቱ የሂሳብ ድንጋጌዎች በማለት ዘርፎችን ወጥ አድርጎ ማቅረብ ማለት ነው በርካታ ጥናቶች እንደሚያመላክቱት ርእሰ ጉዳይ ተኮር ወይም ቴማቲክ የማስተማር ተቀሜታ እንደሚከተለው ሊገለጽ ይችላል አንደኛ ትምህርት አስደሳችና አዝናኝ ሲሆን ተማሪዎች በቀላሉ ሊቀበሉት ሊማሩ ይችላሉ ተማሪዎች ደስተኛ ሲሆኑ በራስ መተማመንን ያዳብራሉ መምህራንም ሳይሰለቹ ሲያስተምሩ ለሞያቸው ያላቸውን ታማኝነት ያዳብራሉ ሁለተኛ ለመማርና ለማወቅ የሚያስፈልገውን ስነ ልቦናዊ ተነሳሽነት ወይም ኪሪዮሲቲ ካፍ ያደርጋል ይህ የመማር ማስተማር ስልት ማለት ነው ሶስተኛ መምህራን የትምህርት ሂደቱን የሚያመቻቹ ፋሲሊቴተርስ እንዲሆኑና ርእሰ ጉዳዮቹን ሰፋ በማድረግ መረጃ ከመሰብሰብና ዝም ብሎ ይሄ ከማስተዋስ ያለፈ የመማር ማስተማር ሂደትን ለማካሄድ ይረዳል አራተኛ ተማሪዎች ርእሰ ጉዳዮች ላይ በመመርኮዝ ጥያቄዎችን እንዲጠይቁ እንዲመረመሩ መልሶችን መፍትሄዎችን እንዲያፈልቁ እንዲያሰላስሉ እድል ያመቻቻል ይሄንንም ለማሳየት ያህል በዚህ የለባይ አርት ቴሌቪዥን ፕሮግራማችን አራቱ ዋና ሐሳቤዎች አራቱ ዋና ሐሳቤዎች በሚል ርእሰ ጉዳይ ተኮር ትምርቶችን ይዘን ቀርበናል በመሆኑም በፊዚክስ the four fundamental forces in nature በጂኦግራፊ አራቱ ወክቶች በኢትዮጵያ ወይም the four seasons in ethiopia በሲቪክስ the four basic themes of civics and ethical education በኢኮኖሚክስ the four basic concepts in economics በእንግሊዘኛ the four basic skills of the english language አራቱን ሐሳቤዎች በተከታታይ የምናቀርብ ይሆናል እኔ እንዳንድ የስነ ልቦና ባለሙያነት ደግሞ ራሱን የቻለ ለየት ባለ መልኩ ሰፋና ተለቅ ባለ መልኩ አንድ ወር ሙሉ ሙሉ የሚተላለፍ አራቱ የሀገር በቀል ስነ ልቦናዊ አውታሮች በሚል ርዕስ ቅድመ ዝግጅቴን ያጠናቀኩኝ እንደሆነና በቅርቡ ለናንተው ተደራሽ የምናደርግ መሆኑን ስለገልጽ ለዚህም ለተሰጠኝ እድል ምስጋናዬን አቀርባለሁ አመሰግናለሁ Greetings everyone and welcome back to the physics presentation. Today we are going to talk about the four fundamental forces of nature. Stay tuned. All around us we are able to see the physical makeup of the universe. The rocks, trees, air and water of this are made from matter. But the question is What keeps matter together? What prevents the rock and trees from floating off into space? What keeps the atom of a molecule from falling apart? And what keeps the cells together to build up the human body? The answer is of course clear. It's force. Force is an influence that causes objects to undergo a change. This change can be a change in motion or a deformation of the object. Even though we encounter different kinds of forces in our day-to-day -day life, all these forces can be put into four categories. which are known as the four fundamental forces of nature. These forces govern everything that happens in the universe. So, understanding them is critical to understand the universe as a whole. It should also be clear that life on Earth depends in a crucial way on the presence and delicate balance between all the four forces. These forces work over different ranges and have different strengths. Let us see these forces one by one. gravitational force 
Gravity is the force that we interact with everyday life. It is the attraction between two objects that have mass and energy. It is a force responsible for keeping our feet on the ground and also for the moon orbiting the Earth, the Earth orbiting the Sun, and keeping galaxies together. Also, gravity is probably the most intuitive and familiar of the fundamental forces. It's also been one of the most challenging to explain. So Isaac Newton was the first person to propose the idea of gravity, evidently inspired by an apple falling from a tree. He described gravity as a literal attraction between two objects. In his famous 1687 treatise, Philosophie Naturale Principia Mathematica, Newton described what is now called the law of universal gravitation. It's usually written as force of gravity is equal to g times m1 times m2 divided by r square, where f is the force of gravity, m1 and m2 are the mass of two objects, and r is the distance between them. g, the gravitational constant, is a fundamental constant whose value has to be discovered through experiment. Centuries later, Albert Einstein suggested through his theory of general relativity that gravity is not an attraction or a force. Instead, it's a consequence of objects bending space-time. A large object works on space-time, a bit like how large ball placed in the middle of a sheet affects the material, deforming it and causing other small objects on the sheet to fall towards the middle. Gravity works over very great distances, trillions and trillions of miles. An individual atom contains a very small amount of matter, and therefore the gravitational force from it is very small. A very large object like the Earth has enormous amount of mass, and therefore has a very strong gravitational force. It is the combined gravitational pull from all the atoms in the Earth that pulls you, the Moon, and an apple to the ground. The weak force. The weak force, also called the weak nuclear interaction, is responsible for particle decay. Despite the name, the weak force is actually 10 to the power of 34 times stronger than gravity. The weak force exists deep inside the nucleus, or center of atoms. It's responsible for determining if an element will be a proton, an electron, or a neutron. The weak interaction has a very small range, so it's not visible in our everyday lives. However, without the weak force, the universe could not exist as it does. Stars could not shine, and elements heavier than iron could not exist. The weak force is critical for the nuclear fusion reactions that power the sun and produce the energy needed for most life forms on the earth. It's also why archaeologists can use the carbon-14 to date ancient bone, wood and other formerly living artifacts. Carbon-14 has 6 protons and 8 neutrons. One of these neutrons decay into a proton to make a nitrogen-14, which has 7 protons and 7 neutrons. This decay happens at a predictable rate allowing scientists to determine how old such artifacts are. The Electromagnetic Force The electromagnetic force, also called Lorentz force, is a type of physical interaction that occurs between electrically charged particles. Objects with opposite charges produce an attractive force between them, while objects with the same charges produce a repulsive force. Therefore, we have that the greater the charge, the greater the force. Much like gravity, this force can be felt from an infinite distance, even if the force would vary very small at that distance. It's called electromagnetic force because it includes the formerly distinct electric and magnetic forces. At first, physicists described these forces as separate from one another, but researchers later realized that the two forces are components of the same force. The electric component acts between charged particles, whether they are moving or stationary, creating a field by which the charges can influence each other. But once set into movement, these charged particles start to show the second element, which is the magnetic force. The particles create a magnetic field around them as they move. So when electron travels through a wire to charge your computer or phone or turn on your TV, the wires become magnetic. Electromagnetic force is responsible for most of the interactions that we see in everyday life. The electromagnetic force holds electrons in their orbit around the nucleus. These electrons interact with other electrons to form electron bond among elements and produce molecules and eventually visible matter. Electrons jumping energy levels provides us with visible light. The electromagnetic force is also responsible for some of the most commonly experienced forces like friction, elasticity, the normal force, and the force holding solids together in a given shape. It is even responsible for the drag forces that birds and planes experience while flying. This interaction can occur because of charged particles interacting with one another. The normal force that keeps a book on the top of a table is a consequence of electrons in the table's atom repelling electrons in the book's atoms. 
the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force, also called the strong nuclear interaction, is the force that holds the nucleus together in spite of the repulsive electrostatic charges acting on the nucleus. This force is basically attractive but can be effectively repulsive in some circumstances. This force is the strongest of the four fundamental forces of nature. However, the range of the nuclear force is short, only a few femtometers, beyond which it decreases rapidly. That's why, in spite of its enormous strength, we do not feel anything of this force at an atomic scale or everyday life. If the strong force were even slightly weaker than what it is, it would not be able to hold the atomic nuclei together against the repulsion of the electromagnetic force. If the strong force was decreased by 50% its normal power, this would adversely affect the stability of all the elements essential to living organisms and biological systems. A bit more of a decrease and there wouldn't be any stable elements except hydrogen. On the other hand, if the strong nuclear force was just a bit stronger compared to the electromagnetic force, two protons could stick together disregard of their electromagnetic repulsion, forming a diproton. If this happened, all the hydrogen in the universe would have been burned to helium. If there is no hydrogen in the universe, there would be no water for start and there would be no long-lived stars like the sun. Unified theories Although it's not confirmed experimentally, there is a strong belief that in the very early universe, when temperatures were very high compared with today, the weak electromagnetic and its strong force were unified into a single force. Only when the temperature dropped did these forces separate from each other, with the strong force separating first, and then at a still lower temperature, the electromagnetic and the weak forces getting their different ways to leave us with the four distinct forces that we see in our universe today. Starting with Einstein, physicists sought for decades to devise a unified field theory that would present all four fundamental forces as specialized cases of a single underlying field equation. As yet, no unified field theory has broad support among physicists, though progress has been made towards unifying some of the forces. Physicists Sheldon Glashow and Steven Weinberg from Harvard University with Abdus Salam from Imperial College of London won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1979 for unifying the electromagnetic force with the weak force to form the concept of the electroweak force. Physicists are working to find the so-called grand unified theory with the intention to unite the weak electro force with the strong force to define an electronuclear force, which models have predicted but researchers have not yet observed. The last part of the puzzle would then involve unifying gravity with the electronuclear force to develop the so-called theory of everything, a theoretical framework that could explain the entire universe. Now let's see some of the practical applications of these fundamental forces. Some of the applications of gravitational forces are Gravity keeps everything on Earth from blowing away plays an important role in the development of life Gravity is a force which pulls objects to the surface of Earth Without gravity, there won't be any atmosphere which means no air to breathe The solar system is held in a stable position with the help of gravitational forces between the Sun and other planets The Moon revolves around the surface of the Earth with the virtue of gravitational force only The following are some of the applications of the electromagnetic force. Household applications Electromagnetism serves as a basic principle of working for many of the home appliances in household applications. These applications include lighting, kitchen appliances, and air conditioning systems, etc. Industrial applications Almost all the instruments or devices used in the industries are based on the electromagnetism. Materials used in constructing such devices include iron, cobalt, nickel, etc., which naturally respond to magnetic fields. Starting from small control instruments to the large power equipment, the electromagnetism is used at least at one stage of their working. Transportation application. Magnetic levitation trains, technology of transportation system, is technology that uses the concept of electromagnetism. These are called the high speed trains, which use power from electromagnet to develop the speed. The trains will float over a guideway using a basic principle of magnets, such as electromagnetic suspension and electrodynamic suspensions. In the electromagnetic suspensions, electromagnets employed on the train body are attached to the iron nails. Application. 
Communication system is a process of transmitting information from a source to a receiver. This transmission of energy over long distance is carried out through electromagnetic waves at high frequencies. These waves are called as microwaves or high frequency radio waves. Suppose in case of mobile phones, sound energy is converted into electromagnetic energy by using radio transmitters. This electromagnetic energy is transmitted to the receiver. At the receiver, the electromagnetic waves are again transformed back into sound energy. medical applications. Nowadays, electromagnetic fields play a key role in advanced medical equipment such as hyperthermia treatment for cancer, implants, and magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. The electromagnetic therapy is an alternative form of medicine which claims to treat disease by applying pulsed electromagnetic fields or electromagnetic radiation. This type of treatment is used for a wide range of ailments such as nervous disorder, diabetes, spinal cord injuries, ulcers, asthma, etc. Many of the medical equipment such as scanners, x-ray, and other equipments use electromagnets in principle for their functioning. <music> Applications of weak nuclear force The weak nuclear force helps to generate sunlight. It also enables advanced medical diagnosis and treatment using radiation to cure cancer and tumors. The weak nuclear interaction also helps to determine the age of organic materials from carbon isotope abundance. In addition, it also used to determine the age of the Earth from uranium isotope abundance. Most importantly, the weak interaction force helps us in generating energy in nuclear plants. Application of the strong nuclear force The strong nuclear force helps us to maintain stability in nuclei. It also helps us to power sun and stars, which crush atoms of hydrogen together so tightly that their nuclei overcome their natural repulsion and fuse together. Before we finish up today's presentation, let's recap some of the important points. Today, we define force as an influence that causes objects to undergo some kind of change. We have explained the properties of the four fundamental forces of nature. And finally, we have also discussed some of the real-life application of these forces. I hope you enjoyed our presentation, and thank you for being with us. Till next time, goodbye everyone.